you want to know what happens when a misaligned fiber reinforced composite is subjected to a compression test? In this video, I will show you the setup of such a test and the analysis of results showing the result of fiber kinking and the formation for such a composite. Let's sit back and relax as we get started with this modeling. Hello. My name is Dr. Michael Okreke. Welcome to CM Videos. This is a YouTube channel where we try to help you create effective computational modeling solutions to whatever computational problem that you're dealing with. The reference publication that we're going to use is given here with details of the paper and the virtual domain would be a cubic that represents the volume element with length, height and width dimensions given. It's going to look like this. The fiber is going to have a 6 micron diameter and the misalignment orientation will be a sine function which looks like this and basically the configuration of the sine function. If you really want to get to know how this virtual domain is created, please look on the card where I have put details about how this can be done. So it is a, basically a video that is showing here that shows you all the details of how this can be done from beginning from creating the virtual domain and the whole setup. So I'm not going to be showing that in this video because it has already been extensively discussed in the video that we're showing now. Now the material that we're going to use for this study will be a carbon fiber reinforced epoxy metric composite with properties that are given this way. Again, it's taken from the publication that I referenced previously. So, so the case that we're going to use will be a uniaxial compression along the x-axis. In this case, the x-axis is the fiber axis. And so it's going to look like this. Our displacement will be a displacement of five microns in this fiber oriented axis with the back end that is kind of fixed and they will undergo our compression to see what will result from the simulation. Let's go now into Abacus and begin this modeling. Okay, so here we are in Abacus and basically this is a model that was created previously. The fibers are clearly misaligned in this axis and likewise on this top axis there's also misalignment in that direction. In making that video, we created a dummy material for fiber and material for the metrics. So this is the first place we're going to start here. So what do we do with the fiber? So we start off with, let's go and do the density. So the density for this material for the fiber is 1780. So we leave that and then the elastic properties, we are going to make it an engineering constant because this the fiber is a transverse isotropic material. So with a very strong one axis fiber values and then the weaker transverse direction. So that's what we are going to use here. So the E11 value here will be 225 e to power 9. The other direction will be 15 e to power 9. The new V12 value v12 value will be 0 0.342 so the same Poisson ratio we can assume for all of them then g12 will be 15 e to power 9 15 e to power 9 and then g23 is 7 e to power 9 and then for the metrics what we ne then need is elastic properties of the metrics which will be 3.760 e to power 9 and 0 0.390 and in terms of its compressive strength, let's use an elastoplastic material model and therefore the compressive strength here will be 1 e to power 6 and 0, 0.0 will be the properties that we're going to work with. Now, because this model with the fiber is transversely isotropic, so we need to give an indication of which direction is x, y or z, so in which case we need to specify some material orientations for this system. So what we need to do first is we need to hide the matrix because the matrix is it's a tropic material so that leaves us only the fiber and now this fiber is what we're going to do so if we click on this which say assign material orientation so we're selecting all of that and click done now what it's asking us is how are you going to select a coordinate system for that a cys for it so there could be a datum list in which case we would have created that previously which we haven't or we can use the default orientation or other method so we're going to work with this fault orientation. That means we're going to work with this reference frame of X, Y, and Z. And this X axis is consistent with what we expect our X axis to be and Y and Z as well. So if we use that, then if you zoom in closely, you could see, yeah, so this is correct. Our one axis is running this way. Three and two axis is transverse, which is fine. And we're orienting it with that global reference frame, which is already what is here. So this is because of how we've created this model. If your model is in a different direction, then you can use another coordinate system which you could create but here we're working with a global reference frame and this is fine 
for our model so we click ok so now that information transports itself into the model now we've got all the material properties we're also giving it an idea of what the orientation would be so that's all that we need to do and we've already done the section assignments from the previous video again if you go and find them out that will help to understand what is going on so the next thing to do is to just do the meshing so we're going to look at a mesh of 2.4 it's probably adequate so i always try to go with the default mesh type that is set for a start so it will be modeled with an element of the trahedron and then we can just go ahead and and mesh it so that's a, a sort of an okay looking mesh um, that we can we have generated for this study so basically we're going to impose a compressive behavior all right so the first thing here is to create some sets so i'm going to call this my x front set and i'm going to use another output format for that and then we'll make sure that we select the node set type to be set to by angle by feature angle by angle especially and then you hover in front here okay so we've selected that and click done now i'm going to rotate this back to the back and again do the same so so this will be x back set and then i'm going to do by nodal set option again clicking there so that gives us that feature this is fine we need to then also add some reference point so what we're going to do here is okay i'm going to select a point probably this point okay click on and then just copy what position that point is so i'll copy it right there and then i'll use it as a reference for my reference point so if i go back to a path module and then choose reference point so i position it there however i'm looking at the exercise so i could just make this a slightly big bigger so maybe 53 so that creates a reference point that's just close to that point because i don't allow, i like attaching my reference point directly onto the material so it's very much closer to there so i can create the reference set so reference point set okay and we make that associated with this point okay so create a step so so i'm going to call this my loading step associated with this a static general loading step should suffice for now because that's we just want to demonstrate the process so a history output so i'm going to take a history output based on what's happening right in the front of this so i'm going to call it my reference point history output only and that will be associated with the rp set which we set up and maybe what is important is rf1 and u1 because those are the information that we need in terms of calculating the stress strain associated with this so we've got that information rf1 and that now the next thing we then need to think about is the boundary conditions so first thing i'll need to create some constraints so this is constraint equation it's attached to an equation and basically what we have here so if i open up this a bit so this is one the reference point we are using will be we are loading it from the front okay in degree of freedom one degree of freedom one attached to a reference point set and this will be minus one again if you want to learn a little bit more about how to impose this kind of periodic this kind of loading please look at the cards where i've shown the philosophy behind this kind of loading all right okay so that means now i've connected this point to that point so invariably then i need to apply my load on the reference point so i'm going to call it my x comp load and then obviously it's a displacement based loading and i'm going to attach it to the reference point set and we did say that it was going to be only a compressive load of minus five which is 10 percent on the 50 micron edge length in the x-axis so there's a compressive pull in this direction and it's kind of been linked to what's happening there so the other thing that we need to think about is just a boundary condition at the back so x back ruler and then we continue so what happens at the x back set okay so we'll fix it in the one and two direction for example and leave it to be free to move in the third axis so again depending on the boundary condition you choose you will probably get a slightly different answer but this is sort of just a basic boundary condition that we're going to use for this study so we're pushing in the front holding at the back and then the job is ready to run okay so this is the result that we generate from 
the simulation and what we're looking at here is a domain stress distribution which does show indicate the fibers undergoing you know taking some of the compressive loading and the metal is sort of remaining you know unloaded but there are some interesting things that you can see here so if we just do the animation of the system so you could see what's happening so clearly there is already the presence of a, a king band forming so again if you look at the shared distortion associated with this so you already see the presence of a band here which indicates the kink band so we could look at other things associated so again there's a clear kink band forming around here and it's following the orientation of the misalignment and this is why compressive failure really happens around there every other place it seems to be okay but now we have significant strain distortion around where the misalignment exists hence the kink band that is forming right around the material so if we then look at the plastic strain so you could see again there's a presence of this band and clearly in this case obviously we've exaggerated this because we have modeled quite close to the fibers and you can see a clear distinction of king bang and as the system continues to deform what you notice is the formation of the king bang as the material just deforms so this is what is going on all the way around that and this is a problem with misalignment in fibers it's a precursor to a king bang formation and that's what this video is showing us as we expected now the next thing that will be interesting is to look at the stress and strain data are resulting from this kind of simulation so let's look at that now what we need to do is to go to the history output and because during the setup we already requested certain kind of history outputs so we'll go straight and use those so that's the reaction force and the displacement in those direction so that's all we need to do so if we plot those two so you could see what is showing us so we get a plot of a a, a behavioral system happening where this the reaction force is that and the displacement is that so we can take this information and then go on and calculate what is the result and stress and strain data if you want to do this again i've put a video in the link that shows you how you can take information of stress, stress force and displacement like this and then go on to make your calculations if you want to learn how to create a virtual domain that led to this kind of result please look at this video that is here if this is the kind of content that you like please do subscribe to this channel so when content like this are made you'll be the first to see thank you and i'll see you in the next video bye bye